G'day guys, I've got an integration question for you today which is asking us to use an appropriate substitution to determine the exact value for this particular integral here. Now in what is becoming a theme of my last couple of videos, rather than going through the nuts and bolts of this question, I'm going to instead approach it like I would in an exam or test style scenario. So I'm going to tell you what I would look out for and um, tell you how I would work it out and like present it for the markers in an exam slash test. So let's get straight into it. So what's going to give us problems in this integration is that x minus 2 under the third. So to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute that out. So let's start by writing let u equal x take 2. Now we can see that there's going to be an x here as well, which we're going to have to end up substituting out. So we can just, let's put that one in as well. So therefore x is going to be equal to, we'll take the 2 across, u plus 2. Now, we also are going to have to work out the derivative of u with respect to x, so we can use it to replace this dx on the back here. So we're going to go du dx is just equal to 1. So from there, guys, we can say that if we times the dx up, we can go, well, therefore, du is equal to dx. Now, before we even do any more substitution, I'm going to have to change my bounds of integration. Now, guys, I would try and do this as early as humanly possible, just so you don't forget. In an exam style scenario, it's very likely that you could just accidentally not change your bounds of integration. And usually, if you're looking at a marking key, it will be the first mark that they give you. Number one, check that they've changed the bounds of integration. So when x is equal to 2, u is going to have to be equal to 0. 2 take 2 is 0. And when x is equal to 3, u is going to have to be equal to 1. So those are our new bounds of integration. Cool. So let's start doing the integral. So first of all, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that 15. And because it's a constant, I'm just going to move it out to the front of my integration. So my first part of the integral is going to be 15 times the integral from 0 to 1 of now, rather than writing x, I know that x is u plus 2. So let's just write that, u plus 2. And rather than writing the square root of x minus 2, I'm going to say the square root of u. But rather than writing square root or using the third, I'm going to just put u to the power of 1 half. Now, rather than now writing dx, I can then write du. So you can see here, guys, it's, we've got an integral which is starting to become a lot more feasible for us to work with. So from here, we're just going to do a little bit of algebra. We're going to keep that 15 exactly where it is, and then I'm just going to multiply into that bracket there. So we're going to have 15 times the integral from 0 to 1. u to the power of 1 times u to the power of a half is u to the power of 3 over 2 plus 2u to the half. Now, I'll put that in a bracket, and then we're just going to go du. So now, guys, we've got an integral that we can deal with. So let's actually take the integral from here, I reckon. So this is going to be equal to the 15 stays exactly where it is. We're going to have add 1 to the power of u to the 3 over 2, so it's going to become u to the power 5 over 2. Then I'm going to times this by 2 over 5, or the reciprocal of the new power. Plus... We've got u to the power of a half plus 1, which is 3 over 2. So this, the new power will be 3 over 2. And then we're going to times the coefficient, which is there, 2, by the reciprocal of the new power. 2 times the reciprocal of 3 over 2, sorry, is 4 over 3. And that has to be integrated from 0 to 1. Cool. So guys, from here, I would just have a take a quick breath and then go, well, when I do these bounds of integration, the zeros, when I put them in, will, become, will be just nothing. So we just really have to find the integration at 1. I wouldn't even bother doing the zero bounds of the integration. So from here, it's going to be 15 times. When we put 1 to the power of 5 over 2 is still 1. So we're left with 2 over 5 plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2 is still 1, so it's going to be 4 over 3. 
Now I'm not going to evaluate it at zero. So from here, I just have to do a little bit of basic fractions. I have to keep the bases the same, so I'll multiply them. And then we have five times three, which is 15. So two times three is six, plus three times five is 15, four times five is 20. Now, what you can probably see from here, guys, is that 15 will cancel out with the denominator. And our final solution is going to be 20 plus 6, or 26 units squared. Great, so let's see how we did. So the first mark comes if we change the limits correctly for the chosen substitution. So they've got the limits set at 0 and 1. So we're going to get a mark for that. So that's one mark. Obtains dx in terms of du correctly. Cool, so we've got du dx equals one, so therefore dx equals du. Great, so that's two, so we can have that mark as well. Two. We've got simplifies the integrand correctly using the chosen substitution. Okay, so that means that we have to end up with something that looks like this. So what have we got? 15 integral from 0 to 1 of that integrand du. Cool, so that's where our third mark comes. 3. Fourth, actually do the anti-differential correctly. So 2u to the 5 over 2 over 5, 4u to the 3 over 2 over 3. Cool, so there's a fourth mark. Then evaluates the definite integral correctly. So 26. Perfect. So that's 5. Now before I go guys, and if it's not already become apparent, what you should notice is that we're getting 2 out of the 5 marks, or 40% of the marks, before we even start our integration. So there was a little bit of a method to my madness in doing this initial part here in red. So you can see that our integration hasn't even started by the time we've got to this point here. And we've already earned 40% of our marks. And so with actually the integration doing the question, we get the remaining 60% of the grade. So why am I bothering going through the marking key with regard to this question? Why not just show you how to work it out and then move on? Well, it's because, guys, I believe that although that we look at the curriculum and we study the curriculum hard and we study particular questions hard, I don't think enough focus has been placed by teachers and students alike on making sure that their answer is maximising their expected marks per question. And the way that we can do that is to ensure that we are aligning our like logical process or our solution with the way that the marks are being allocated as the teacher reads down their marking key. So what I've done here, guys, is I've ensured that even if I make a silly human error in an exam and maybe not get 26, get 24 or 16 or whatever number I get here, I'm always going to be leaving this question with at least 40% of the marks. So if I don't do this initial part, which some people would probably go, well, why would I bother writing all that stuff down? I know what my U substitution is, and I know what my bounds of integration are, so can't I go straight into here? Well, you can, if you get it right 100% of the time. But if you don't get it right 100% of the time, what you're doing is you're ensuring that when you get it wrong, you automatically miss out on these two easy marks up the top. So in this sort of series on exam questions, guys, what I'm going to be going through is I'm going to be paying specific attention to the structure of the answers rather than the answers themselves. So if this is something that you'd like um, to see more of, definitely give the video a like, subscribe to my channel, and if you've got any um, thoughts or ideas of what sort of exam questions you'd like to see, leave them in the comments section below. And until next time, guys, just keep on enjoying your maths.